Hey everyone, this is Alicia Casanto and welcome back to my channel. I am going to be looking at a story that I started last year and never finished, but need to because it's part of my new anthology that I'm editing. So we're going to take a journey together, read it together, and see if I can't finish this thing this week. Yep. So I'm halfway through my reread and it's made me cry a handful of times already. I don't know if that's because I know obviously how the story ends. I've written his perspective of it. Now I'm in her diary of it. This probably makes absolutely no sense without context. It is my main character of my Blood Phoenix Saga Broken World series. Rhea's parents were both dead. There's no spoilers here. She's that tropey orphan to begin with. And I wrote Adarin's story or the Phoenix father story in which he gets marked and has to go through the process of grief realizing that he's going to die because a new phoenix is going to be born, Rhea, even though she's half human. And they have a very sad ending together, but it's sweet and sad, which makes me even more teary because it's tragic because they did actually like love each other. So it's interesting to see that showing up and I did, so far I did a good job, I think. I do have to finish it yet though, so. Like, current update. A few more tears, but I finished reading through it. I have five more scenes or entries to write. I think I could finish this in a week. That's doable, right? So this might be partly hormonal, but I just started writing in Tatiana's diary again, and it's the last few bits, and, and this is the depression spiral backwards, so this is going to be trying for me, but I'm going to get it done. <sighs> Funny, I know she's going to die, but I'm still crying for her. So, the lovelies. I wrote like 710 or 11 or something like that words today in Tatiana's diary. And as you will see, I sobbed half the time I was writing it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I am a step closer to being done. What am I on? I have three more. Three more scenes. So I finished two scenes. I've got three more to do. I think I can finish it by the end of the week. So that's the plan. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Hi guys. Ooh. So I finished all but one scene in Tatiana's diary and I figured a few things out about both Adarin and 
Phoenix and how the Phoenix work and what's going to happen in book five, the last one in my series. And I kind of wanted to talk about it real quick, even though I'm sniffy and crying because I've been pretty much crying writing this whole thing. And there's the myth that, you know, that the Phoenix is reborn from the actual ashes of the previous Phoenix. But because Adarin made it essentially with a human woman, there's no ashes. Like she didn't, Rhea didn't rise from the ashes. She was born like a normal baby. And using the myth that when a phoenix knows that he's going, he or she's going to die, he seeks out somebody to take care of the baby because it is going to be a baby when it's born again. And of course there's that repayment of balance and everything that the phoenix stands for. Adarin does take care of the family that took care of him. Now, when Rhea dies in book one, because she becomes a vampire pretty much in chapter one, a new phoenix is born, but she left no ashes. So I have an idea of her former phoenix, or her the, the next phoenix rising from his actual ashes, which gives me all sorts of ideas for things that are going to happen in book five in the subsequent YA series I'm going to do with some other characters in the series. I'm excited to know that now. All right, I'm going to go cook dinner before I finish this last scene because it's it should have been dinner already. I finished it. Hello, my people. As you saw in the last clip, I finished Tatiana's diary and I have one more time to read through it, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out, I think, so far. I wasn't sure about the style originally, it being in diary entry, and I know there's a term for that, I don't remember what it is offhand. I guess the final test will be reading through it all, which I'm gonna I'm gonna do today, I think, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I probably should. Alright, after my walk, after lunch. I better get to it. I hit the halfway point. Happening again. Making myself cry. Hmm. Alright guys, so I finally finished writing Tatiana's diary and I reread through it. I did cry a little bit more. But not as sobbing as I was while I was writing it or the first read through. I wonder how I'm going to do when I read to my mom this week. I have no idea. She's a crier too. So this is, we're just going to be like sopping tears. It was funny. I was telling her yesterday. Like, mom, I have something to read for you next week. And she goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, and I cried while I was writing it. And she goes, oh, I'm going to cry a lot, aren't I? I go, yep. She goes, I can't wait. Because <laughs> she's, she's a dork like I am. The thoughts about finishing this. So if you didn't know, I had a rough end of... 2019 being sick a lot of people dying my my big fat cat died too and he's actually right there I don't know anyways I won't get in into any of that so I ended up putting a few of my stories away that I just could not concentrate anymore and found a new distraction which go figure I found a new distraction in April because of what I have in the world right now and I'm getting back to my old projects currently while still writing in my fun one. So my first goal was Tatiana's Diary because I'm editing the Time Anthology and that's my story for the Time Anthology. So I had to get it done and I feel really good about it. I was concerned initially about if the format of having it actually be diary entries was going to work because she goes, one, she, she flip-flops tenses all the time and I'm not sure if I want to be really strict about that or not. She goes back and forth with talking to you, her daughter, or just talking about life, which I find interesting. It's not a lot of in the scene stuff. There's a little bit of that, but you still get the feeling of the story being told from a person rather than just being told blandly. Like you get her language and it's kind of like narration. I am happy with that. I'm wondering what my mom's going to think and my husband's going to think and my editor's going to think and then some of my beta readers that I have on standby to read this as well. I'm feeling really good about it. I did figure some stuff out which was really awesome and now I'm tinkering with book five in my head which I haven't in a little while and I'm really excited to get to book five in my Blood Phoenix saga and the Broken World series which this is a short story part of because she actually reads her mother's diary in book four and I want more of it to come up in book five and so I figured I had to write the diary. That only makes sense, right? Especially I found out that her father knew how to process his tears in order to make things that helped people because you know Phoenix tears and Rhea has no idea how to make her tears heal people. She has no idea how to use a lot of her powers. Now I have something extra for book five that I didn't know about before and that makes me really excited. Okay so 
I want to know from you guys if you ever put Project Stone with the intent of coming back and how you kind of move yourself back into that world that you were creating to that person's head that you were in after having written so much. Do you struggle with it? Uh, do you have any questions about how I managed to do that or how I managed to flip-flop back into different perspectives and all those other things? Please ask me questions. Please let me know in the comments below if you struggle with this or if this is your jam and you have advice because give it to me. I'm always open to advice. Anyways, I'm babbling. I'm excited. I'm actually finished something. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.